In this video, we're going to recreate the LabVIEW program shown in the Meripage book. I believe it's on page 30. It works like this. We run the program by clicking on this run arrow right here. And when we change the slider, you can see that the temperature in degrees F is here. And that's converted into degrees Celsius over here. As we pass certain temperatures, we get different messages in here. Looks like if we pass 85, we change to a sunscreen message. And if we drop below about 40 degrees F, we get a long underwear message. To stop the program, we hit the stop sign. Writing programs in LabVIEW is a little different than what you might be used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually kind of fun and really easy to generate nice professional looking displays like this. So let's go ahead and get started. When you go to the ni.com Try LabVIEW page, you'll see something that looks like this. Click on Download Options, and you'll see three options like this. Are you a professor or student? Are you evaluating LabVIEW? Or are you a current LabVIEW user? The best one to click on is Evaluating LabVIEW. You'll download LabVIEW here and install it. And that can take a little while, so while that's happening, go ahead and watch these little Getting Started videos right here. They're short little three or four minute videos that'll give you a quick understanding of how LabVIEW works. Once LabVIEW is installed, go ahead and launch the program. You should get something that looks like this after you get through a couple of the dialogues. Now keep in mind, this is LabVIEW 2012. If you're using an older version, like LabVIEW 2011, you might get a screen like this. The bottom line is we want to find a blank VI. So if you're using an old version, it'll be right there. Under the new version, it looks like we need to create a project, which brings up a screen like this, and there's my blank VI. So I'll double click on him, and we're ready to go. What you should end up with is two windows. One that looks like this, we call that the front panel and one that looks like this. And we call that the block diagram. Give me a second while I rearrange all of this and fit it on this small screen. Great. So again, on the left I have my front panel, on the right I have my block diagram. On the front panel, you drop all the controls and indicators that you want. And on the block diagram, you wire them all together. And that's your program. The first thing we need is that temperature slider. So let's right click, go to numeric controls, and I'm going to use this pointer slide right here. Drop it on the screen, click on it to select it, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for us to see. Well, that's probably a little too big. There we go. You see, I have this little slider here, and I want this to be red, so I'm going to right click on this guy and say Properties. Give it a second to find the properties. Here they are. And I'm going to change that color to just a standard red. And while I'm at it, my temperature doesn't go from 0 to 10 degrees, does it? So let's change our scale from minus 40 to, oh, I don't know, how about 150 degrees. That ought to cover it. Beautiful. OK, so the first thing we want to do is display that in a text box. So I right click, Numeric Indicators, and I just have this empty box here. Grab that, put it up on the screen. Change the name to degrees F. And let's change the size of all this. If I click on this and get a marquee around everything, I can just change the font size right here. Grab the size, and let's just make it something bigger like 24. There we go. That's easier to see. I need to repeat that for degree C. So let's go right click, numeric indicators, grab the box, drop it on the screen, change the name to degree C. Click on the edge of the box to highlight everything. And let's change that size. 24. There we go. It's a little easier to see. Finally, I need that message box right here. So I right click, and I want a text indicator, and I just grab a text box and drop it here, grab the corner, and make it bigger. There we go. We have our entire front panel ready to go. Let's go ahead and change the name of the slider to temperature. There we go. That'll work. Now, did you notice as we drop these on the screen, a corresponding icon was dropped in our block diagram. So here's our temperature slider, here's our string box, and here's the output in degrees F and the output in degrees C. All we have to do is wire these together. Now what's the formula to convert the temperature in degrees F to degrees C? Do you remember? Well, I'm going to type it down here in the bottom. To enter just a random text note, just double click, and I'm just going to make a note to myself that degrees C is equal to degrees F 
minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. And again, I'll highlight that, change the font size to something bigger. There we go. Now it's nice and easy to see. So we need to replicate this formula up here. I need to take the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, which is coming out of the slider, and I need to subtract 32. Well, here we go. We just right click, hit this down arrow here if it doesn't already show, and click on programming. I'm going to click on this little pin here to keep this guy handy where we can see him. There we go. Okay, so I want to take temperature and I want to subtract 32. So I go to numeric, subtract, and drag that up onto the screen. I'm going to move that out of the way. Drag this guy over here. And when I hover over this, you see these little orange terminals on here? I want to wire those up. So I want to wire this terminal to that one. I hover over this guy until that nub appears. I left click on it and I draw a wire over to that guy. Now I want to take the temperature minus 32. So I right click on this guy. I say create a constant 32. Great, we just subtracted 32 from the temperature. Now what I want to do, I want to multiply by 5. Well here we go again. I go get my multiply, drag him over here, wire him up, I just left click on the nub, and I need a constant here, I need to multiply by 5. So I right click, create a constant, 5. Perfect. Okay, we need to take all of that and divide by 9. So we go grab a divide. And did you notice that simply because I brought that real close to the multiply, it automatically wired it for me. That's pretty handy. Right click on this nub, create a constant, and that needs to be a 9. Great, that's our whole formula. The temperature minus 32 times 5 divided by 9 is the temperature in degrees Celsius. So I simply take that and I wire it up to that guy. Now I don't like the placement of all this stuff, so I'm going to move some things around. I'm going to grab the temperature in degrees C, bring them down here, take that wire, and move them over here. That's a little bit better. Now degrees F, we already have that, right? That's this wire right here. So I bring my wire spool down here, click on that wire, and bring it up there. Perfect. Let's move some stuff around, make it look nice and we're ready to go. Now one of the cool things about LabVIEW is it's constantly checking your program. And whenever it sees a program that's ready to run, it turns this arrow white. Do you see that right there? For example, if I delete one of these wires, look what happens. That arrow turns into a broken arrow. That means your program isn't ready yet. So I go back and I look over here and I say, oh yeah, I forgot a wire. So I left click on this guy, drag him over there, and boom, my arrow turned white. It's ready to go. Let's see what happens if we run this program. I'm going to close this guy out. If I run this program by clicking on the white arrow, it ran, but when I move the slider, nothing happens. Interesting. So if I put the slider at 100 degrees, F, and hit the white arrow, it took the 100 degrees F and it converted it to degrees C, but then it stopped. Well, what's wrong here? What's happening is the program is executing this once and quitting, which is exactly what we told it to do. What we really want to do is we want to do it over and over and over again so we can adjust this slider and see the answer. Well, that's easy. I'm going to take all this stuff and move it just a little bit to make some room, like that. And then I'm going to right click and go find my programming toolbox again. There it is. And I'm going to go to Structures and pick up this while loop. And I'm going to draw a mark here around all this stuff. What this box says is do this over and over and over again until we tell it to stop. Now I don't want it to stop, so I'm going to right click on that little green nub right there. I'm going to create a constant and it put a false there. It says don't ever stop this while loop. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. I see my white arrow, so let's try and run this thing. Oh, now it's running. See the little black arrow with a dashed line? That means we're running over and over and over again. So now if I move this guy, Look, all my temperatures are updating in real time. So zero degrees F is about minus 17. I think 32 degrees F should put me right around zero. And sure enough, it does. It looks like everything's working. That's perfect. Now, the only thing we need to add is our text message display, right? And I think in our early example, when we went above 85 degrees, we had a message here that said to bring sunscreen. 
when we went below 40 degrees, we got a message here that said, bring long underwear. And in between, we just said, how to have a nice trip. So how do we get those three different cases to display three different messages? Well, whenever you have something like that, you want to use something called a case structure. Now, before we can edit our block diagram, we got to stop the program. So hit the stop sign. That kills the program. Come over here to the block diagram, right click, go find your programming toolbox. There it is. Back in structures, there's this case structure right here. Grab that guy and make a box right around here. That ought to be enough room. Now we want him to make decisions based on the temperature. So I'm going to wire the temperature from here down to this input. I'm going to move some things around a little bit. Make it easier to see. There we go. So now we're going to take the temperature into this case structure. So the first case, I want for all temperatures up to 40 degrees, so dot dot 40, will give me one result. I'm going to right click, add a case after this. I'm going to say all temperatures that are 85 degrees or higher, so two dots there. And then there's always a default case sitting here, so he'll, he'll get everything else. So one case will take all the cold temperatures, one case will take all the hot temperatures, and this guy will get everything else, so let's get rid of that zero. We don't need that. Great, we have now have three cases in here. So for the cold case, we need some text that says bring long underwear. Well, I just right click, go find my programming toolbox, and I want a string constant, this guy right here. Drop him in there, and let's just put whatever we want in here. I'm gonna say bring long underwear. Maybe two exclamation points. And I'm gonna wire that guy out to the display. Remember, this guy is this box over here on the control panel, right? Okay, for the uh, default case, we want to put another string in here. Now we could go back to our toolbox and get that, but what I like to do is go back to that one we just did. I'm going to take this guy, say Control C for copy, come up here at 85, and say paste. I can just move him in here and just change the words. So let's see, when it's real hot out, we want to say bring sunscreen. Great. And then we wire him out. And we have one more case to do, the default case. I'm going to paste that one in with Control V. And in the default case, we're just going to say have a nice trip. And wire that out. Now notice before I finish this wiring, I have a broken arrow up here. It means my program's not ready, right? But as soon as I finish that wiring, boom, that arrow turned white. My program's ready to run. So what's going to happen here is as that temperature changes, this case structure will output a different text message to our text box over here. We have a white arrow, so let's try it. Run the program. And there's our default message, have a nice trip. Let's go up to 85. Boom, changes bring sunscreen. Got into minus 40, bring long underwear. That's it. That's how you write a live view program. You create your control panel, you hook everything together, put it in a while loop, and you're ready to go. Now, here's what's really cool about LabVIEW. Let me stop the program. Suppose I don't like this little text box here. It's kind of boring. I want to change that to some colorful meter of some kind. Well, watch. I just come up here, right click on this guy, and I say I want to replace him with a numeric indicator. And instead of using a text box, let's use a meter. And we can move him down here, maybe. Let's see, I don't want the temperature to go from 0 to 10, so I'm going to right click, change the properties. And let's make our temperature minus 40 to 150, just like our slider. And we're ready to go. I have a white arrow, so I can run that. The program's running, and look. Now I have a graphical meter for my output instead of that boring text box. How cool is that? I can stop the program. If I don't like the way that looks, I can change the shape of it, the size of it. I can change the colors, all kinds of things I can do. What about temperatures in degree C? Let's change the look of that guy. Let's right click, replace, go to my indicators. Let's make him a gauge. Cool. 
move them around so I can see them. And let's see again. We don't want them to go from 0 to 10, so I right click, change my properties. Uh, I don't know what the, he's going to go from and to, but I'll just say minus 40 to plus, let's say, 100. Great. I have a white arrow, so let's run the program. If I change my temperatures, look, there's degrees C and there's degrees F, all graphical. So you can see with LabVIEW, it's really easy to get carried away with how your front panel looks. And it's actually kind of fun, too. LabVIEW is primarily used in science and engineering, but you can use it for just about anything. I love to pull LabVIEW up because it's so quick and easy to get a program up and running. Now here's a couple challenges for you. The first one's easy. Change the messages. When you go above 85, give me a different message. When you go below 40, give me a different message. How would you do that? Well, that's easy. Stop the program and you just change these text messages, right? Okay, that one's pretty easy. How about changing the values of the temperatures at which we change these messages? How would you do that? Well, that's easy. You would stop the program and then you just click the case you want, let's say 40. What well, if you want to change that to, uh, you know, 32? Boom, done. That's all there is to it. So you can change the temperature value at which the messages change. That was pretty easy too, wasn't it? Okay, how about something a little bit harder? Instead of three cases, you know, up to minus 40, normal, and above 85, give me more cases. How about minus 40 to minus 32, and then minus 32 to zero? Break this up into like five or six cases. I think you'll find that's a little more challenging, but you can do it. Give it a try and see what happens. Now, please understand, we've just barely scratched the surface with LabVIEW. It's an incredibly capable program that can do lots of different things. So have fun experimenting with it, and good luck with your programming merit badge.